we go through all this. I want to see more from Elliot Wolf because if you look at his free agency signings, seven, you know, about half, seven of the 15 guys that they signed, whether re signed or brought from outside free agents, like have been duds. Jacoby Brissett was going out to not lose games. Joshua Uche, who you extended, you traded him away. KJ Osborne, we just gave the case for why he shouldn't be here anymore. Sione Takitaki battling through injuries. I'm not going to write him off, but he hasn't paid the dividends yet. Antonio Gibson, yep. who was supposed to be a great third down back and a secondary back, had his flashes, but has fallen off. Chooks a core four isn't with the team after playing 13 snaps. Nick Leverett, you cut. And then you go through the draft where Drake May is the easiest draft pick. If you're picking top three, any of those three quarterbacks, easiest draft pick. Yep. Your second round pick that you trade back to get, Jalen Polk has looked lost as a rookie. Caden Wallace couldn't make that switch to left tackle, even though you said he would have been a left tackle if he didn't have Olu Fashinu at Penn State. Layden Robinson, you benched. Javon Baker is lucky to even be active on game days. Marcellus Dial has been a special teamer, and guess what? Your special teams hasn't been fantastic. And then Joe Mill and Jaheim Bell, those are end of the draft picks. I'm not even going to get into them. But Elliot Wolf, as a general manager, you are assessed by free agency, by the draft, and the trade deadline. And so far, he's failed at all three. Even at the deadline with the Joshua Uche trade, where you only get a future sixth for a pass rusher that has shown in spurts he can be special and goes to a spot where they're in win-now win mode. So you know they want to make a move to even back up that defense anymore. And you go with a future sixth? It doesn't make sense what we've seen from him. So if the phone calls come in and he gets a demand, we need to see more from Elliot Wolf. He needs to help out this team more. Just like we want to see more from Gerard Mayo and Alex Pell and Robert and Jonathan Kraft and Robin Glazer. Just like we want to see more from them, I want to see more from Elliot Wolf, who again was someone, as I point out that draft and free agency, well, let's not give him the title until after the draft. What are we doing? What are we doing in the leadership of the Patriots from top to bottom? But right now with Elliot Wolf, at this point, with the trade deadline ramping up, and you see the return some teams are getting, I want to see more from him. If we were to see more, you think the Patriots can make moves from other teams that could possibly be sellers at all, Sean? Yeah, I, I do. And I, I think I think the biggest thing when from a Patriots perspective is you need to be looking towards the future, period. It yep. doesn't need to be, you know, it doesn't need to be selling. And it doesn't need to be, you know, it doesn't need to be only selling and it doesn't need to be only buying. You know, you kind of have to mix that. And I think that there's there's players out there, you know, for teams that are struggling too. And, you know, if you trade a pick and you get someone to come in, you know, then you, they're under contract or maybe they're um, set to hit free agency in March, but you have a better, you know, kind of a leg up on the competition in, in terms of getting yeah. them to stay in your building and, you know, agreeing to an extension or agreeing to a new contract. That's sort of thing so I, I certainly think that there are ways and and you know there's a case to be there's a case to be made for the patriots to add is yeah. is i think maybe the best way to put it and there are certainly players that i think stick out uh you know i think you talk about some obvious positions of need right you talk about receivers you talk about um offensive linemen and especially because i think receivers are more likely to be available and well we've seen you know Devonte adams amari cooper deontay johnson yeah. you know we, we've seen receivers become available and i would say probably more you're more likely to get a receiver at the deadline than you are to get you know a left tackle a franchise left tackle obviously so i i think there are there are plan there are deals to be made for sure yeah what i think of you point out the Amari Cooper move. We see the price that Deontay Johnson is. And I've said it time and time again, but I'm serious about it. You go out and you trade for a T. Higgins. You get a 6'4", 220-pound yep. wide receiver in your building who's been in and out of the lineup, but playing on a franchise tag and showed up the second he was franchised. You have two-thirds in this upcoming draft. One of those being the Falcons from the Matt Judon trade. Part ways with one of those thirds. Yep. A day two pick. Give a future third or a future fourth. Those are two good draft picks for a receiver the Bengals won't pay and won't keep around. And if you get a T. Higgins in your building now, you prevent him from hitting free agency. Mm -hmm. You get him now. You have $25 million in cap space this season right here. Work out a contract where you pay him a good amount this season and all the cap space over $110 million to have next season, work out a deal there too. Is T. Higgins a bona fide number one? No, he'd be a number one for you. He'd be a high level number one for you with the depth you have. But as we've learned from teams like the Green Bay Packers, 
have a bunch of wide receiver twos, make sure they're complementary to one another, and make it work from that standpoint. And it can work. You get it to Higgins. You can still draft a receiver in later rounds if it's a Trey Harris or a, y- a Yomanor from Stanford. Or if you go somewhat higher up, depending on what you do at the tackle spot. But the T. Higgins with the Bengals, who are now 3-5 and five and need to rebuild because they can't get any stops and the defense can't help it. And Joe Burrow, even how talented Joe Burrow is, cannot elevate that team to win. Go and get him. Or if you're looking at a Christian Watson with the Green Bay Packers, insane mm-hmm. to think with them at 6-2, and two, but it's still a team that will look towards the future. And Christian Watson, just 20 targets a season. His health has been a question. That's a red flag I'd have for him. But okay, if Deontay Johnson only demands a fifth, Deontay Johnson and a sixth only demands a fifth, all right, what would Christian Watson mm-hmm. and a seventh deal with? With all these future draft picks the Patriots have, because they have way too many sevenths in future drafts, way too many sixths now at Joshua Uche. Okay, you have that. And if you get a Christian Watson in your building, you can get him healthy. He's a great downfield receiver. Hello, your quarterback right now loves throwing the deep ball. If you can trade for him, that would make a big move. And it's just setting up depth before you get to free agency in the draft. So while they're sellers, they should still be buyers in certain positions. Yep. You addition by subtraction with KJ Osborne, that addition can come back in a T. Higgins or a Christian Watson. I put T. Higgins way above a Christian Watson, but they're both guys that you need because Pop Douglas is good, can't be your number one. The guys you have right now can't be your number one. They need to find ways outside of upcoming free agency and the upcoming draft to add talent because this roster is void with talent in so many spots. Yeah, I couldn't agree more about T. Higgins. And that was when I was just kind of talking. That was the player that I was thinking of is, you know, at this point, the Bengals are, they're reeling a little bit. And at this point, you know, if they go and they lose this week, like they should be in in sell mode and especially when you have a player like t higgins that can get you some draft pick in return um and he's gone you know he's gone after the end of the season so and they have to know that so i I think that's like the player that you know and we've talked about this you know preseason offseason the whole last year it feels like um but definitely i would say he's the one that kind of sticks out it's i've said it before the season began when he was showing up on the tag I said even when the season opened up and the Bengals were doing bad and they had a clear need at wide receiver, you want to help your quarterback with his development. You want to help out this offense overall. You want to see, again, if you're Elliot Wolf, if you're Robert Kraft, if you're Gerard Mayo, you want to see what Alex Van Pelt can do. Get him some weapons. Don't leave mm-hmm. any excuse. Well, he didn't have a receiver. Well, he didn't have a left tackle. Well, go out and get those at the deadline for teams that would need it. And again, all these draft picks you're, you've accrued, Go out and use them to acquire talent. And we'll put T and even if someone's out there thinking, well, a third's a lot for T. Higgins. What is T. Higgins proven? Yeah. He is an NFL wide receiver. What is that third round pick when you draft whoever? A prospect, unproven, and you don't know if they'll work out. And I think that's the biggest difference. As someone that likes assets, draft assets, likes rebuilding and drafts, cost control contracts, you have to pay at certain positions. And the Patriots put themselves in that spot. Because if they wait for free agency, Sean, who are they going to be bidding with, man? Yeah, the no, Ravens, exactly. yep. right? The Chiefs, much better situations all around. Teams with great cap space, teams with need at receiver, the Buccaneers with Baker Mayfield and that offense. Look, who are you going to be bidding with? And you're going to get outbid, even if you yep. overpay, because those are better situations. Get guys in your building and pay them now. That's what I think is important for the Patriots to find a way to be buyers while also being sellers. Look towards the future while still trading away guys right now it can be important on both ends yeah and like i mean i think the biggest the biggest thing is that you know yeah you don't want to treat you don't want to give away picks maybe because you know those players are going to become free agents at the end of the season and then the thought is well you just go and you sign them without giving up a pick and the Patriots are not in that position and you kind of no. just touched on it. I mean, it's, they will, they're not an attractive landing spot for these players. Yep. So you have, you might have to part ways with a little bit extra and you might have to pay a little bit extra. And it's just, that's, that's the position they're in. And, you know, this is like a perfect, you know, a prime example of, you know, giving up picks to get something in return and then eventually keeping them under, you know, under your control, under your contract. That's what's important is that get them in the building now because as yep. you saw with Calvin Ridley, they're just they're just a leverage piece now. Mm-hmm. Drake May can be great, but you're still just a leverage piece right now. We'll see how this team finishes.